Welcome to my lecture online. Let's talk about conductors. What is a conductor? Well, a conductor is an object that's made out of conducting material, which of course in itself doesn't mean anything if you don't know what a conductor is. But it says here, through which charges move easily, and that's the key to understanding a conductor. Typically, a conductor is made out of a metal whose valence electrons are easily moved. For example, copper. With copper, we have a nucleus that has 20, 29 protons, and around it we have 29 electrons. The first 28 electrons occupy the first three energy levels, n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, in such a way that the orbitals are filled, which leaves one additional electron, the 29th, which all by itself occupies a space in the fourth energy level in the 4s one in the 4s orbital all by lonesome and because of that that electron can be easily removed and since it can be easily removed it can be easily moved from one atom to the next so a wire for example that's made out of copper very easily you can push an electron off one of the atoms which means there's now a space that electron on the next atom can then move to this space this electron can move to that space to this space and so forth so electrons can move through a conductor rather easily because the electrons are easily removed from the atoms themselves if electrons are bound very tightly to the atom and it's very difficult for them to move from one atom to the next then the material becomes an insulator and that means you cannot very easily move electrons through the uh, the object and I guess this should be an O right here let me put an O down there we go now what makes electrons flow through a conductor well they don't freely just flow flow through a conductor on their own you need to push them through they need a little bit of a push so that you can push these electrons off those outer orbitals just easily but they still need a little bit of a push that push is created by an electric field that produces a potential difference now we'll talk about those things at a later time but at least you have to understand that by themselves electrons will simply not move through a conductor they need to be pushed through the conductor so they will move in this case of an electron from a lower potential to a higher potential now that's not normally how we think of current flow in physics or in electric engineering. We typically think of positive charges moving, but that's a topic for a different video. At least here we understand that it's physically the electrons are moving through the wire and they move from a low potential to a high potential. They're attracted to a high potential. That's one way to think about it. Now, if the charges are not flowing, if things are in a static situation and we take excess charges and we place them on a conducting material, therefore a conductor, the charges will then almost instantly move to the farthest point they possibly can because those excess charges repel one another and so the charges will end up residing on the surface of a conductor and if you try to move them inward they simply push back out because they all repel each other and they simply want to be as far away from one another as possible. So excess charges will accumulate on the surface of any conductor. Now, once the charges begin to move, then the charges will distribute themselves throughout the conductor as they're moving. When the, the movement stops, the current stops, the charges, the excess charges will then again instantly go to the far edges of the conductor, the surface of the conductor, and will reside there in a static situation. So at least now we understand to some extent what a conductor is, which will help us understand further when we talk about Coulomb's law. That's how we know.